Hey everybody, I'm Keychain. I'm going to be doing a beginner's guide video series on the game The Ants Underground Kingdom. I um, wanted to quickly cover my video style and kind of introduce myself. Uh, I used to play a game called Guns of Glory. It was another strategy game. I uh, played that for about two years and now I'm moving over to The Ants. Um, I tend to do my videos as as much as I can in one take. I try and do one take straight through. I don't do a whole lot of editing and cutting. I like to make a quick outline and go with it. So I'm not perfect. I'm gonna miss things. Um, I'm still learning this game. So I'm gonna give you all the information I have and the things that I've learned uh, and the mistakes that I made. <laughs> so that's where a big piece of my learning comes from. Um, before I get started in the actual content, Amazon App Store. Uh, if you're in a region that you can play this game from the Amazon App Store, do that. Uh, in the description, we've got download links for both the Amazon App Store and the Google Play Store and Apple. Of course, you know, if you are gonna be spending it all, you will save money using Amazon. Uh, that's all I'm gonna say about it for now. Um, let's get started. So, Beginner's Guide video series. I'm going to do this in small chunks. I don't know how many videos it's going to be, but today's video is going to be about marches, formations, march cap, all of the things that I wish I knew when I was getting bullied and getting my butt kicked the first couple of days in this game. So, here we go. Um, march cap in this game. Some of the ways to increase increase your march capacity in this game, um, let's cover them real quick. Now, one of the, the ways or one of the things that I wish I knew was these main buildings. There's these buildings over here. See these? The Rally Center 1, Pro Rally Center, and Rally Center 2. There is a third or a fourth building, and that's going to be for my fourth march slot. But each one of these buildings is independent, uh, and it controls one of your marches. So let me show you what I'm talking about. When you go and you click this Pro Rally Center, see this echelon, echelon, however you say it? When you click that, this is my Pro Unit March. Um, and I can rename that if I don't like that unit or that, that name. But this is my Pro Unit March. Um, and see how it has three slots. So it's got, you know, this top slot, the middle, and the bottom. This one I haven't unlocked yet, and we're gonna cover how you unlock those. Um, but basically you assign ants, special ants, to each slot that you've unlocked, and then there's different amount of troops for each. So see how my top slot has 16,100, my middle slot has 18,300, and my bottom slot has 5,600. Now, I didn't know about this for the first couple of days, and I was getting my butt kicked. And I couldn't figure out how these guys had so many more troops than me. And it was very frustrating to be losing so many fights <clears throat> when I just I had no idea what I was doing. So, I'm going to share that information here. The first very important thing, when we click one of these special ants, the number one skill in these ants increases how many ants it can bring in the march with it. So you can see right here that my current skill level adds 8,100 troops um, and each level the special ant gets increases it by 100. And then as I increase that, the values get higher and higher and you can see it goes all the way up to level 10, which is 18,100. And then if you star up your special ant, which I don't know anything about that yet. I'm going to have to learn about that. Um, you can go even higher and it goes all the way up to 18,100. Oh no, that's the cap. And then each level still increases by 100, but you get soldier ants damage. So each level of this increases your damage, not your march cap. But this is something that I have no idea about yet. Once I learn, we'll do a video, you know, share the information. But right now, I don't, don't know anything about it. 
The second major piece of this is <clears throat> skill number, let's see, let me find the right one. I know it's in here. There is another skill that increases. It was skill number six, I believe. Here it is. Okay, so skill number six. If you unlock this skill, the piece of this is this dominance three effect increases the soldier cap by 25% and then the highest level is 250. So unlocking the skill increases your march cap even higher. Uh, now the other piece, and you know, there's, there's a ton of stuff you can go into special ants. I'll be doing my own video on special ants. And once I figure out all their abilities and how they work together and all that stuff, like we'll, we'll do a special ant series and cover my favorites and, and all that stuff. But right now, we're like 10 days in. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. So how else do you get March Cap? These buildings are very important. When you click the Details tab on this, click the More Info, you could see I had, when I was losing all these fights, I had Level 1 Pro Rally Center, and all the Rally Centers were sitting at Level 1. So the amount of troops that I could have in a March without Special Ants was 1,200. And that's split in three. Okay. So it's 400 for the top slot, 400 for the middle, and 400 for the bottom slot. Level 2 goes to 1,500, 1,800, 2,400, and up we go down the line to now. I've got 16,800 troops, which when you divide that out, comes down to 5,600. So you see the number on the bottom here? This 5,600 is how many troops I could have. And if I got rid of these special ants, like that, 5,600, 5,600, 5,600. And that's how we add up to our total. So it took me a while to learn that. Um, and until I had learned that, <laughs> I was losing a lot of fights because people were coming and attacking me and they had way more ants than I had. Uh, and it's very frustrating. So hopefully you don't make that same mistake now that you know. Upgrade your alley buildings. It's very important. Um, so the next thing that I want to talk about that is kind of on this subject, but kind of not, is stationing ants. Uh, it's another very important piece of this game that I was getting asked questions on by some of the people that, that joined me in this game. Um, oh, also, if you want to come join and try this game out, we're in Kingdom 552, and the alliance is YTF, YouTube Family. There's 14 of us right now. Uh, room for more if you are tired of your other game and you want to come check this one out. Come join the alliance, give it a shot, um, come hang out, and you know we'll make room for you. Okay, so... The other building that's very important is this special ant habitat, this one here. Uh, the other thing that's important to note is as you level this building, see these station points? We start with 10, and then it goes 12, 15, 17, 20, etc., and it goes all the way up to 100 points when you max this building out at level 25. For now, I'm at 22 points. Well, why does it matter? Well, it matters because you gain benefits from stationing ants. Um, now, stationed ants are kind of stationed to buildings to your home base. Uh, I don't think they, they can't be used in marches while they're stationed, at least as far as I know. But they all have different effects. Now, one of the things that can get confusing here is there's a lot of ants listed, and you probably don't have them all. This button up here, this owned button, very helpful check that button and only the ants that you own will show up in this list. Now, looking at these, there's production, there's military affairs, and then there's management. So there's different categories here. And see, I have 22 out of 22 points. If I unlocked another ant and I don't have the points to station them, I have to remove somebody else to station a different ant. And they all have different values. So if I remove this ant, to station this giant destructor ant is six points versus this green ant, it's only one point. But the gold ants have way more benefits. Very, very beneficial. Um, I will show you 
some of the differences real quick. Uh, green ant has two skills. This ant will, you can, the ant itself will gain experience after you do a successful meat rapid production. And then if we, you know, right, the other ability it has is this feeder, this um, each wood louse colony output. I should probably unlock that ability because it's a small number, but I've got the ant equipped. Um, let's unlock it. So now what I've done is I've added 50 per hour to each of my wood last colonies. And that doesn't seem like a lot, but there's eight of them, right? I think I've got, I might only have, I don't know, I've got like six or eight, something along those lines right now, but it'll grow. So I've actually just added 400 an hour, which, you know, not a ton in the grand scheme of things, but over a 24 hour period, it starts to add up. Over a week, it adds up. You know, all these small things add up. So now we just boost it up to 150. So that's going to help us out. Um, looking at a blue ant, blue ants have four skills. So this one has the breeder ability. He has aphid breeder, which increases my honeydew production. And then if I do this honeydew gathering, um, I can gain honeydew. Let's read this ability better. So it just says gain honeydew, and the cooldown is 22 hours. So I'll gain 15,000 to 25,000 honeydew once a day. Not a ton again. Uh, and then this last ability, aphid breeder, um, I don't know how, you know how that works. It just increases my aphid breeding effect, which is my honeydew output. There's a lot to this game. And, and if you're getting lost in this one already, I'm going to do more guides. It'll all start to make sense, especially if you're playing the game. These things will start to make sense. But now, seeing how those ants all had, you know, either two or four, looking at this ant, this giant destructor, has six abilities. This first one, this is an active skill. See how it says develop active? Um, basically, when I use this skill every 22 hours, it gives this ant a ton of free experience. So it helps the ant level up without having to send it out to fight or without having to use honeydew on it to level it up. So it's nice to actually, you know, allow this ant to, to get free experience. The other thing that it has is honeydew production plus 4,000 per hour, which is nice. That's, I've leveled it to level four. It goes all the way up to 10,000 per hour. There's this one that it unlocked aphid rapid production. Now this one is a big deal um, because before before I, I got this ant and equipped it, aphids did not have rapid production. So they were just sitting passive gathering. I couldn't do anything to boost that. Um, now I can get some extra boosts out of my honeydew um, to gain more because it's the most valuable resource. Like everything needs it. Uh, eventually, I'm going to be able to unlock this to increase the breeding effect. Um, same ability that the green ant had, but better. Goes all the way up to 950,000 an hour at level 10, which is fantastic. Like, that's a ton. So, getting an extra 950,000 to a million a day is going to be very beneficial. And then this one, again, increases the output. Um, for two hours on an eight hour cooldown. So you can super boost, you know, at level 10, super boost your aphid output for two hours, which is going to be huge. Um, so that's stationing. There's other ones in here like military fairs, which, you know, you gain experience while they're healing for these ants. Um, faster healing speed, resource reduction cost, and it can increase your, your healing pool's capacity. Uh, so that's, you know, beneficial. And then in the management category, there's other things that, you know, you gain experience for the ant when the ladybug comes. Um, you gain meat when the ladybug comes. You get the ladybug to stay longer. Um, small things like that. And, it's, you know, just boost. So if you have ants, um, you should be stationing them to maximize your experience. And, you know, all of your experience and all the things on your special ants adds up. Um, adds to extra power. So it's something that you definitely want. Okay, so transitioning back to 
the ant habitats. There's a total of four. Okay, so that means you're going to have four total marches in this game. Um, the last one doesn't unlock until, let's see, queen level 18 is when you unlock your last slot. Now the other thing that I want to talk about around this whole march cap, ants, and all that stuff is how do you unlock the second and the third slot for your marches? You can see here on my pro rally unit, I've unlocked two. But on my second rally slot, I've only got one unlocked. That's the one that it came with, right? So you have to research that to even unlock that top end. And each one of these has its own independent research. So if you look here, there's a pro unit research tree. There's a march unit one research tree. There's a march unit two research tree. And I'm sure there will be a March Unit 3 research tree. Looking into these, the very top ability allows the first slot of the Special Ant to become available. So as soon as you've placed that, um, that Rally Center down, research the primary leadership so that you can get a Special Ant in there and start getting some extra experience and doing things like that while... Um, while you're killing threats and gathering and doing those other things. As you go down the tree, you have to get these to level 3. You have to get the hard skull, the spiky back, and the elastic belly to level 5. And then march speed up, and then you can unlock secondary leadership. Okay, That unlocks the secondary slot for that march. So this is my pro unit's secondary leadership. I'm currently working towards this third slot but it's going to take a while because I have to max out all three of these other marches so and look at how much this research costs it's way outside of my my current resource abilities but I have to max these all out to level 10 and then I'll be able to unlock that third slot what I probably will do depending on time is I will come and unlock the secondary march for this unit, for my, my third um, march. The reason that I was kind of going for pro unit is there's a, a ongoing quest for your new player to, you know, do some things. Uh, and let me show you that. It's called Natural Selection. So inside of Natural Selection, there's a whole bunch of tasks they give you. And one of them that is hard, I'm a completionist, is deploying three orange ants in any one unit. So to be able to even do that, I have to unlock the third slot and, well, I now have a third gold ant. So as soon as I unlock that third slot, I can put that third gold ant in there, even though it's not a, a war ant. I'll put them in there, get these 15 points, and then I can use that for some rewards. So that's also going to help me get my unit power to 200,000 or 300,000 because it'll instantly make it so that, you know, I can have some extra ants in that march. Although if I use that, the honeydew ant, I won't get extra troops. So that probably won't work out. So I'm going to have to unlock another ant. So hopefully I can get that done. Okay, um, let's see. What else do I want to look at? We're almost done with this video. Um, the last thing that I wanted to look at is defense. How do you set defense in this game? And I want to look at some battle reports and my losses so I can show you the mistakes I made. Right next to all these buildings, I put these all next to each other conveniently, is the entrance. The entrance, see how there's this garrison button? That's where you set your defense. The thing about this game that is difficult and some people are going to get caught out with this is looking at this you garrison your marches and you put them in order so that they'll fight in the order you have them set but the ants outside of the war will not suffer losses after the defensive troops are defeated so if they beat all of your defensive troops here that are lined up then they can attack you, plunder you. It's not going to dig into your other troops and fully zero you. The other caveat to this is looking at the battle formations and the defense and all of this stuff, right? You, they've got really good 
you know, little help articles and all of this. And you can read this on your own time. I'm not going to read this word for word. But um, basically, if I send all three of these marches out, I've got no defense. The only defense I have is this toxic fungi mushroom that is part of my, um, you know, defense. But it doesn't do a ton. It does a little bit. And I haven't seen it actually work yet. I heard somebody say that there's a special way to trigger it. I don't know much about this yet. But you've got to be careful sending all of your marches out. Because if you send all of your marches out, you got no defense. So you're just going to lose. Um, now let's look at some battle reports. Um, that's one of the things that I have a bad habit of is, you know, overnight I wanted to go and send three units gathering. Well, if you're going to do that, unless your kingdom has a full nap and you're at peace, you need to shield because me having my three units out gathering is great for my, you know, getting the resources while I sleep, but you know, I've got no defense, so I could lose all of the resources I've got banked. And I don't have a ton banked right now, but, you know, that's it's not something that I want to risk. So I'll just pop a 12-hour shield, go to bed, gathering, and we're good to go. Now, looking at some battle reports. Let's scroll back to my early days where we're getting killed all the time. So, this guy is on my list. And eventually we're going to go back and we're going to fight him. So looking at this, right, right off the bat, you can see that um, I didn't have, is this, this says I invaded him. That's not right because I didn't remember invading anybody. Anyways, let's go to this one, because this one makes more sense. Unless I accidentally invaded him, I don't remember attacking anybody. Um, but he attacked here, and see how I've got way less troops, right? I've got 4,053 that, were, that I defeated. That's what this top line is. But my total march cap is 14,000. And over here, he's got 21,000 that survived, plus 2,000 defeated. So he's got 24,000 march cap to my 14. And I was like, how the heck? He's got one ant. I've got one ant. Um, my ant was level 23. His ant was level 23. His ability is a couple higher than mine, but that doesn't make up that huge difference. And I looked all over the place. And then I looked at these bottom two slots. And I was like, how the heck does he have 3,800 ants in his bottom two slots? That's huge. That's way more than me. Look at mine. <laughs> I had 400 ants in my bottom slots. And I was like, what is happening here? That's when I went and looked back at the, uh, the rally buildings and found out that I need to be upgrading those because they're important. Um, so I defense failed there, defense failed here. The thing about this is I had enough hospital capacity, so I didn't actually lose any troops, um, but he did on the attack. And yeah, so he attacked us for quite a while after that, and people attacking in the mines, that's, that's a pretty big difference. Look at this, this guy, he attacked me in the mines, I have a total march cap of 9,700. He has 57,000. So way, way above my level. Uh, I have a level 24 ant. I scroll down here. He's got an insect. He's got a 28 ant, 24 ant. He's got 9,000 troops in his bottom slot. Like, just killing it, right? Um, way, way above me in far progress. So, that was fun. And then, you know, scrolling back up here, I started invading some people, and we, we killed some people today. So this guy started, he attacked one of my guys, so I went and attacked him, and then I attacked his alliance. You know, it was a thing. It was fun. Uh, and I won these ones. I had some deaths, but I had a much higher march cap than he did on defense. So I sent my march, and I have, you know, 33,000, 33, something thousand uh and his defense only had i don't know like six thousand and then see this toxic fungi level one how it got skill kills one 
so it didn't do much. But it's there. And then the second round of battle, same thing. The toxic fungi didn't do much. Um, but the other thing is it shows each round of battle in this game. So I kind of like that too. Okay. Um, as far as a first beginner's guide video series, I know I rambled on a lot and I branch off into different stuff when I get on tangents. That's just my style. Um, you know, some people like it, some people don't, but that's just me. Okay, I think that's where I'm going to stop for now. Um, that's all I have written down for things that I really wanted to cover for this video on <clears throat> marches formations, stationing, all of that stuff that people were asking me questions about right off the bat. Um, so that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. <clears throat> Remember to hit the like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.